With the release of the Sisters of Parvos, we have 8 new Tenet guns to acquire from them. 4 primary and 4 secondary. They're quite the varied collection, with the same bonus damage system and max capacity potential as with the Kuva weapons. So, what's to know about them, and are they actually any good? I'm the Genjineer, let's solve a practical problem. I'm going to start by looking at the primary weapons, and then we'll move on to the secondaries. Also, just before we dive into the details, if you're a fan of the content on this channel and want to get more from it, consider becoming a supporter through Patreon. You can get access to the data and graphs I use behind the more analytical videos, and see just how I come to the conclusions brought to you on this channel. The link is in the video description. With that said, let's look at the primary weapons. The Tenet Envoy is a rocket launcher with laser guidance if you aim. As a magazine-fed weapon, it functions similarly to the likes of the Kuva Ogris, but stats-wise, it's much closer to the Kuva Brahma, effectively getting the best of both worlds. Compared to the Brahma, the Envoy boasts significantly higher ammo count, no projectile drop-off, a better damage type of an 8 cold rather than an 8 blast, and a much higher critical damage multiplier. In exchange, the Envoy loses a noticeable amount of critical chance, has a marginally smaller blast radius, though still with better fall off, and a bit lower direct damage, but also a truly punishing 4 second reload time. Now for that last point of reload though, the Envoy is suited to multi-weapon gameplay as it reloads itself whilst holstered, giving you a reason to switch to a quick melee for a bit when the magazine isn't full. This feature synergizes very well with the new primary dexterity arcane, which will provide a damage buff to the Envoy when you get melee kills. Alternatively, Primary Merciless will improve your reload speed when you've got a fully ranked arcane on top of the damage buff. Now the difference in the critical stats for the Envoy is overall in its favour versus the Brahma. There are a great many ways to increase one's critical chance, with a number of them being absolute buffs rather than multipliers, so things like an Arcane Avenger. However, critical damage has a very few means of being increased outside of weapon mods, meaning a higher critical damage bonus is usually more important than a higher critical chance. As I said, this favours the Envoy. The Tenet Envoy is a very solid weapon, and certainly one to pick up. Regarding damage type, the innate cold of the explosion will combine with the other primary elements if selected for the bonus damage type. So for example, a Toxin Tenet Envoy will give innate viral instead of cold on the explosion. However, this bonus damage type is considered like a ninth mod slot. So if you add another mod, say a heat mod onto the build, the heat will combine with the bonus element, rather than leaving it combined with the innate cold. So a Toxin Tenet Envoy with a heat mod will give you cold gas, not viral heat. As for a go-to build, this here will do you just fine. The Tenet Flux Rifle is an upgrade from the original Flux Rifle, functionally becoming quite a different weapon. With a higher crit chance, status chance, unlimited range, magazine fed rather than using a battery, higher fire rate and still able to use the Flux Overdrive mod, it's all round just better. With its high slash high status, this weapon is quite well suited to applying slash procs to chew through many enemies. To this end, a toxin bonus will be very helpful. Given the option for toxin status against the corpus, easy corrosive or gas damage against the infested, and easy viral damage against the grenier. Alternatively, a heat bonus will apply more generally to all three factions. The direct DPS of the Tenet Flux Rifle lags behind many other weapons, but the ability to apply so much status so rapidly does wonders for its damage. In terms of modding, you can confidently rely on having many status procs in effect, and therefore remove serration from your build for galvanised aptitude. Due to the low critical stats and single target damage, modding for fire rate and punch through will do wonders to help keep this weapon relevant. The Tenet Archiplasmor is an upgrade from the basic Archiplasmor. Its unique twist is the shots now ricochet, giving some extra multi-hit potential, though nothing too reliable in my experience. It boasts a longer range, better critical multiplier, improved status and significantly higher base damage, at a slight cost of fire rate and reload speed. Otherwise, it mostly functions as the Archiplasmor does, with a radiation typed projectile wide enough to wipe out half a corridor. Shotgun modding isn't typically the most amazing for options, despite the number of prime mods available. I wouldn't exactly call the Tenet Archiplasmor a status weapon, 
and yet it doesn't have amazing critical stats either, meaning it will still fall off into higher tiers. That said, the immense base damage should see you handle most threats quite handily, especially if you match your damage type to your enemy sensibly. This build will help you do just that. Last of the primary weapons is the Tenet Tetra, which has seen quite an overhauling capability. Rather than comparing to the standard and Prisma Tetra, which honestly are both just inferior to the Tenet version, let's look at the Tenora Prime, another automatic assault rifle. The Tenet Tetra has a little under half the fire rate and marginally lower crit chance, but in exchange it has one quarter more status chance, over triple the base damage when fully upgraded, and a slightly higher accuracy and reload speed. In essence, the Tenet Tetra is a more ammo efficient gun with higher damage and higher status, with an innate element of your choosing. But the Tenet Tetra isn't just an assault rifle. Switch from automatic fire to semi-automatic and it will launch a single grenade which arcs and explodes on impact. The damage from this grenade is over 16 times that of a single normal shot. With an 8 meter wide explosion radius, no damage fall off at all. For comparison, the Kuva Brahma has an 8.3 meter radius explosion with 90% damage fall off, dealing only 10% of its damage at the outer limit. This overall seems like an amazing bonus option for the Tenet Tetra to clear a wide area. There's just one downside though. This grenade uses up 80 ammunition to fire. The entire magazine is launched in one explosive round and then you reload. After a few shots of this, you'll very quickly deplete your ammo reserves. Using a fully ranked ammo mutation mod, and going by the wiki stats on ammo drops, you'd still need to kill 4 typical enemies on average with every shot to just about maintain your ammo reserves, making it a very shaky choice to use the explosion like this. Getting ammo efficiency from energized munitions can make using this weapon a lot more manageable, both in ammo consumption and also allowing you to fire 4 grenades before reloading instead of just one. Otherwise though, even with an ability like Dispensary, you can rapidly run into ammunition issues if you do not ensure there are plenty of pickups to get a hold of. Basically then, continue to think of the Tetra as an assault rifle first, with the grenade as a backup option. In terms of a build then, this should serve you for most uses. So overall, I'd say the most exciting primary weapon to acquire is the Envoy. It has unique tracking capabilities, high damage, reasonable ammo handling, and plenty of particle effects if your computer likes that kind of thing. The Tetra can make for a reliable assault rifle, the Archiplasma is a powerful, yet very standard shotgun, and the Flux rifle is a status monster, but lacking in crowd application or other supporting traits. Now let's dive into the secondaries. The Tenet Detron is a hand shotgun with modest critical and reasonable status stats. While its base damage seems to be lower than the other Detron variants per projectile, the combination of a higher pellet count and the bonus damage type means it's more powerful overall before even considering critical hits. Due to the reasonable status potential, this is a good weapon to pair with the new galvanized shot mod for extra damage output. Overall, the damage potential is very good, but it is limited in range and accuracy owing to its shotgun nature. Unlike the other Detron variants, the Tenet Detron can also empty its magazine in a rapid burst, using alternate fire. This can deliver a huge amount of damage quickly, and can also have you looking at the ceiling if you're not very careful. Recoil reduction can come in very handy for this weapon as a result, either via mods or via a secondary deadhead if you consider yourself an accurate shot. As a go-to build, this will allow you to get some work done. The Tenet Diplos are what I would consider solid yet disappointing. They have a very high critical chance and a decent critical multiplier, inviting you to experience some good damage. Their modded damage is pretty good overall, albeit a bit lacking in the status department. Also, the Diplos reload themselves automatically while holstered, such as if you switch to melee. Treated as is, they make for a nice mid-range automatic secondary. And then there's a twist. They boast a lock-on ability when aiming, you would hope such a lock-on would be great news, conjuring up visions of something like the Icarius, perhaps. What you actually receive is a lock-on that first requires you to aim directly at a target to mark them. Then, when you fire, you get a two-round burst which homes in on their centre of mass. After you've fired your shot, the lock-on is lost. While you can mark up to eight enemies at once this way, 
and therefore fire 16 rapid shots to home in on all of them, most missions will not see you facing enemies which care very much for such a spread of shots. All you've achieved is to lightly irritate half a dozen or so enemies, and leave yourself wondering why you didn't just hip fire and clean up as normal. Considering just the hip fire, it has some great stats as an automatic fire secondary. It has very similar stats to a Gibber Splat Rattleguts, except with double the base damage, effectively just twice as strong. In that regard, it's a solid weapon. But as I said at the start, the lock-on is disappointing. For this weapon, a standard looking pistol build will again do you just fine. Now the Tenet Psychron is the corpus answer to the Kuva Nuka. Both weapons are beams which can chain to two nearby enemies. Both of them have high status chance, and both have a damage bonus based on the Progenitor Warframe. Overall at first glance they seem quite similar. The Psychron has innate heat, allowing for a more offensive focus on damage types compared to the Nuka's innate radiation. But this does come at the cost of one fewer max possible status type. The Psychron loses 20% of the status chance, though it makes up for it for a 20% higher fire rate. Compared to the Nuka, however, the Psychron's critical stats are much worse, giving up that incredible 5 times critical multiplier of the Kuva Nuka for a paltry 1.8 times. While the critical chance is raised from 7% to 20%, as I mentioned earlier, there are far more ways to get critical chance than critical multiplier, seriously hampering the ability to buff up the Psychron's damage output. As a final point of comparison, the Psychron loses nearly half the magazine capacity, down to 40 from 77 but it runs off a recharging battery rather than a normal reload, making it more suitable in low ammo scenarios or when swapping weapons between recharges. In the main, I'd say the Kuva Nuka is still much better, but the Psychron isn't a bad weapon. A heat viral setup will still carve through most enemies who dare to get in your way, utilising the status and damage innate to the weapon. It just has a significantly lower damage ceiling owing to the below average critical multiplier. So this corpus reply to the Kuva Nuka is a competitive one, but it's not a winner. In terms of building for this, you can basically copy any Nuka build over to this weapon, just make sure to consider your damage types when you look at the build. Finally then, we have the Tenet Spirex. This secondary fires explosive rounds with innate impact, puncture and heat on the direct hit, and innate heat only on the explosion. It also has a guaranteed impact proc on direct hit allowing for more effective use with the mod Hemorrhage. In terms of gameplay, the Spirex is not too far removed from the Lex Prime. Both are slow firing, and both see you wanting to aim for the head for all the damage bonus you can get. But statistically, the Spirex has nearly three times the potential damage output with matching mod loadouts. The explosion radius of the Spirex is very low at 2 meters, so it wouldn't be reasonable to expect to hit many more targets all that often. In the main, this secondary can be devastating to single targets, and can occasionally help clear up some of the weaker units clustered around tougher ones in cramped spaces. Due to just how limited the explosion radius is, you may find it more beneficial to drop a damage mod for punch through rather than going for explosion radius, and instead taking that extra time to line up a multi-target shot rather than praying the explosion gets the work done. The Tenet Spirix isn't the most inspiring secondary weapon, but the stats on it do get some work done. Overall then, the secondary weapons are really a matter of preference. You've got your choice of a shotgun, automatic pistol, semi-automatic explosive pistol, or a laser beam. Each of them have capable damage stats, with more damage found than the ones which aren't as good for status as is to be expected. So really, just look at your own playstyle. Do you want a status beam that's not the new core? Do you want a better Lex Prime? Do you want a side grade to the twin Gracketers which reload themselves? Or do you want a shotgun that can try and snap your neck with recoil? Whichever you choose, you can be certain that the damage output will be good. So what's your favourite Tenet gun? Let me know down in the comments. There's a bunch of options with a good amount of power behind them, so I'm certain there is something for everyone. That's all on this topic though, so as always, get Tenets, rain fire, and fight well Tenno.